Ida Tarbell, the woman who took down Standard Oil. Ida Tarbell was a prominent American journalist during the late 19th century and early 20th century. She was famous primarily for her articles opposing big businesses, Rockefeller Standard Oil being one of them. She was also one of the few successful females in the field of journalism at the time. She's remembered as a muckraker, a journalist whose goal is to expose the ills of society, particularly political and corporate corruption through investigative methods. Tarbell was born in Erie County, Pennsylvania on November 5, 1875. Her first experience with the harsh reality of corporate corruption was early on. She was only 14 at the time of the Cleveland Massacre, which occurred in Ohio and western Pennsylvania. A great number of small oil producers were faced with an impossible decision. Give up their businesses to be merged with J.D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil, or try to compete with the up-and-coming business tycoon and ultimately fail. Tarbell's own father was one of the oil producers victimized by Rockefeller's merciless business ventures. Her father, Franklin Tarbell, was one of the brave few who attempted to resist the impending loss of his business to Rockefeller. Ida witnessed firsthand the brunt of resisting higher powers. Her family struggled to get by, her father's business partner committed suicide, and her father eventually had to put a mortgage on his house so he wouldn't lose it. Ida claimed that she was overwhelmed by the hate, suspicion, and fear that engulfed the community after Rockefeller gave her previously very prosperous town a visit. My father once told me that the secret rebate arrangement where Standard Oil received discounts from the railroads that others did not receive was like someone trying to crowd everyone else off the road. The profits of the Standard Oil Company did not come from the railroads. The railroads, rather, were the ones who profited from the traffic of Standard Oil Company. And remember this, whatever advantage the company received in its constant efforts to reduce Although he denied expenses, it for quite some time, Rockefeller eventually admitted to the sketchy the nature of what occurred during the Cleveland Massacre. Three major railroad lines, the Erie, the New York Central, and the Pennsylvania, had secretly agreed with Rockefeller to raise her shipping prices along with paying rebates and drawbacks to Rockefeller. This scheme is what allowed him to leave the Cleveland area owning nothing short of 85% of the oil businesses there. Her hometown absolutely devastated, Ida would carry her resentment towards Rockefeller into adulthood. She went on to be the only woman graduate from Allegheny College in 1880. She spent a short amount of time teaching, but soon dived into the world of journalism when she joined the staff of the monthly magazine The Chautauqua in 1883. She later moved to Paris to work as a freelance writer. It was not until 1894 that Tarbo joined the staff of McClure's, a popular magazine famous, or perhaps infamous, for its muckraking articles and biographies. McClure's allowed Tarbell to begin her most renowned investigation, the one on the severely corrupt practices of Standard Oil. Her brutally honest articles revealing the truth behind Rockefeller's success were first published in this magazine. One of her articles even made it to the New York Times. It was typical of Tarbell, a reveal of and response to a corrupt deal between Rockefeller and his own brother's business partner, James Corrigan. I see nothing in this statement to make me revise what I have written in the case of Oregon versus Rockefeller. Mr. Klein urges that Mr. Rockefeller sold the stock acquired from Mr. Corrigan soon after the transaction. I do not see that that proves anything. He may have bought it back. He certainly was foolish if he parted permanently in 1893, at least anyone a member of his family, with any portion of his standard oil certificates. He presents himself to the public in only two phases, as the richest man in the world, and as an active adherent of the Christian Church. If Mr. Rockefeller did not declare, and had not all his life publicly declared, that the church and the Bible were the most precious things in his life, I should hesitate to apply the golden rule to the Corrigan case. As it is, I assert that I have that right. Her findings were later compiled into her first book, The History of the Standard Oil Company. The public was outraged by the contents of her book, which were so thorough that it was used by the Supreme Court in 1911 to finally crush the Standard Oil monopoly. Tarbell was a significant figure of the Progressive Era, a time full of people who strive to reach the same goal she accomplished, to reveal the corruption and destroy the undeserved success of scheming corporate figures.